So you're stuck at home, you have nothing to do, your kids are bored, they're tired of the toys that you've played with about a zillion times already, what do you do? In this video, I'm gonna go over some activities that you can do with things that you already have at your house, so you don't have to go out and buy them, and they're fun and you can keep your kids entertained. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. I love doing activities with things that we already have at our house on hand. It's because it's kind of cheap and easy and free, right? So I thought what better time to do a video about things that you can do and pull together from things that you already own. Some of these ideas I've mentioned before in past videos and go into like really in-depth explanations, but in this video I wanted to show you my top things that you can use to do activities for your kids. If you're new around here, I would love it if you would subscribe to the Purple Alphabet family. We do educational activities for kids, ideas and inspirations to learn through play, sometimes some hauls and shop with me's and giveaways. And if you are new, make sure to say hi down in the comments and if you aren't new, say hi to because I like hearing what you are up to. Let's get onto those ideas of activities you can do with things you already have in your house. If you have a roll of masking tape, a roll of painter's tape, I've even found floor tape at the Dollar Tree, then you can do so many activities with this just on the floor of your living room. I stretch out a piece of tape here. I'm having the girls walk the line one foot in front of the other, and this is gonna be a great gross motor activity. You can also do jumping the line, jumping over, going forward. You can do jumping going side to side, and you can even make this as part of an obstacle course. One of the fun things we did was trying to go backwards just to mix things up a little bit. You can also try adding in a second line of tape to do a two line balance all the way down, one foot on each line as you walk all the way across to the other side. Add in the arms similar to a bear walk and do a bear walk down the lines and you can even try this one backwards too for some really silly fun. At one end, try taking the tape a little bit closer than the other end for even more of a challenge. My girls really like this activity where I took letters and I put the tape in the shape of the letters and they did some alphabet tracing. They took some of their mega blocks and they traced the letter. You can use this with stuffed animals, you could use it with balls, you can use it with anything that you have around the house just to trace the line. This is an activity that took quite some time and kept them very busy. They wanted to complete their letters and they learned the letters at the same time. And of course you can do a traditional hopscotch indoors as well on your carpet. So I just marked out some blocks here and let them do some hopscotch scotch. We also tried making a maze on the floor with our tape. So we just took it and made a whole obstacle course where they can scoot through in an obstacle on their feet, doing a bear walk, a crab walk, or they can take a ball and push the ball through the maze. Now for toddlers and preschoolers, this is a great task because they're learning how to control their movement, control the ball to get it through the maze. And my girls had a lot of fun with this one. The best thing about this is that you can change up the maze and do all sorts of different ways throughout your house. Cotton balls are another great source and most of us have a bag of cotton balls in our bathroom. I've done some art projects with them which is great for this time of year. This is a bunny we made a long time ago. And then you can also make some sensory bins by placing a whole bunch of cotton balls into a plastic shoe box or any kind of container that you have. I filled this one up with some magnetic letters and made it a hunt and find. So I kind of mixed them up here and then they had to pull out the letters and recognize the letters as they pulled them out or they could hunt for a specific letter too. Cotton balls also make a great paintbrush. Just hook them up to some clothespins, dip them in paint, and you can make a whole bunch of art projects using cotton balls and some paint. Combining the roll of tape, a straw, and some cotton balls, you can make a really fun game. We're gonna draw a line here with our tape across our floor, and now we're using the straw to blow it across the line. Seems easier than it is, but I'm telling you it is a challenge. You can also try doing a square on the floor where everybody tries to blow their cotton ball into the square using the straw. The first one to do it wins. Or you can grab something like bean bags and use those as a bean bag toss. Just set a line on the floor and have your child try to hit all the different shapes that you have put on the carpet with your masking tape. The ones that are farther away could be more points or you could just be trying to aim for a particular shape. Back to the cotton balls. My girls love this one as toddlers and preschoolers where I put a shape onto the floor and they had to sweep the cotton balls into that square. This was a great exercise for them and they really enjoyed trying to get them all in there. 
similar to cotton balls, you can also do some activities with cotton swabs. Just take some paint and some cotton swabs and you can have some fine motor exercises. This one is a pre-writing exercise and I'll try to find the website. It was a long time ago I did this, but I'll try to find the website and put that below in the description box. It's a free printable where you take the cotton swab, dip it in the paint and you dot across the line and the space is provided. If you don't wanna print that out, you can also do it on a piece of paper where you draw some circles like this and have them do a particular number. This whole sheet had 10, so it had 10 circles with 10 dots in each circle. If you happen to have some really large straws, you can use it for lacing. So lacing the Q-tip into the straw is another great fine motor exercise that takes a lot of hand control. If you have a dry erase board, write on the dry erase board some numbers and then have your child trace them to erase them. You can do this with numbers, letters, and shapes. And also with cotton swabs, you can make some shapes just by placing them on the table in different forms. Now, if you have a straw and you have some Dixie cups or some other cups, set them up in a pyramid, place that cotton swab inside the straw and use it as a dart shooter. You can play games or just have fun knocking over the cups. Moving on to the kitchen, you probably have some paper plates available. All you need to do is write letters on each one of them and you can make an ABC maze. Now I showed this in a whole entire video on some different ideas you can do with it. I liked to put mine in ABC order in a maze-like form so my children had to follow and figure out which letter to go with next as they stepped from plate to plate. And then also in this video, I showed you some other ideas to do after you've done your maze. This is great for alphabetical order and letter recognition. We also played a game where you could roll a die and go that many spaces and to call out the letter that you land on. If you have some extra balloons around your house, paper plates make great rackets to play balloon games. So just take a big popsicle craft stick and glue it to the back of a paper plate. And then you can bounce your balloons, keep them up in the air with your paper plate racket. A few cups and some craft sticks and cotton balls and a little bit of string, you can make a cotton ball catcher. So you just take the popsicle stick or the craft stick and glue it with some string on the underside of the cup and attach the cotton ball to the other end of the string and now you have a cotton ball catcher. This game does take a little bit of dexterity but it is a lot of fun to try. If you have some plastic cups, try writing some numbers on them and placing them around the floor. I used a Sharpie here to make sure that they're on pretty good. And now you grab a ball and you try to have your kids kick a certain number or score points by each one they knock over. This is fun because you can place it in different parts of the room. You can put them close together, you can put them far away, and it's a good game if you have multiple children. If you wanna play outdoors and you have some water squirters, I would recommend putting some up with some numbers, letters, sight words, math problems, whatever it is you're working on, and shooting that number with your water squirter. And it's a lot of fun too, especially if it's a nice day outside. Knocking over them means you get some points. And here we are doing it with letters of the alphabet. Same thing, call out a letter or have your child call out what was knocked over. And then of course you can pretty much do anything like sight words and math problems. I also need to announce a giveaway winner. So if you participated in the Think Fun giveaway for this really cool moon spinner, and you see your name here on the screen, you have won. So congratulations, you have 72 hours to respond to claim your prize. And if you didn't win this one, don't worry, I'm gonna have a lot more coming up. If you have a brilliant idea with using things that you already have around your house, let me know down below in the comments. I like to hear your ideas. You guys always have the best ones and I like it when you guys comment and talk to each other too. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.